morning, everyone. Um, this is Eva Hussain speaking from Polaron Language Services. Um, today, for a change, we have a very positive story and a wonderful um, special guest, uh, Ifrin Pidek from um, Sister Works. Good morning, Ifrin. Good morning. Morning, everyone. Really, really, really happy to have you uh, with us um, this morning. And for those of the those of us who don't know what who Sister Works is, uh, it's an organisation that's a social enterprise. Essentially, is a good way to describe it. I think that was established about seven years ago. And Ifrin is a Chief um, Operations Officer. She's been with the organisation for four years, and the last two she's held the the the, the role of um, Chief Operations Officer. Ifrin, what is Sister Works, um, and what do you do? So um, SisterWorks is, uh, you describe it uh, pretty close there, it's a not-for-profit organization. Um, so we have uh, a, a social enterprise arms in that uh, not-for-profit, we are based in Melbourne. Um, we also operational in uh, Bendigo. And uh, our mission is through work and entrepreneurship, um, we support women who are refugees, asylum seekers and migrants to improve their confidence, mental well-being and sense of uh, belonging. Um, we uh, provide um, what you call a vocational or second chance uh, training to, uh, to the sisters that join SisterWorks and um, with the uh, motivation to push them into pathways. And those pathways can be, you know, becoming entrepreneurs, pursuing uh, working around craft and sewing in the textile factories and uh, places like that. Um, so we have a program, it's almost like a tailored program to the sisters that, uh, that joined us. Um, we have, um, I think Eva mentioned, we, we are now in operation for um, seven years and um, we are still growing. Uh, we would like to grow. We would like to keep uh, uh, having a bigger reach. Um, so last year we set up operation in, uh, in Bendigo. It uh, started with uh, one day a week and now we are operational um, uh, five days um, a week. And obviously with, um, with the current situation now, we cannot really have a face-to-face -face, um, meeting anymore with the sisters, but um, we are um, very, very uh, fortunate enough to have the team of um, uh, volunteers and uh, staff that are technologically savvy. So when the first lockdown happened around March, I think it was, yeah. um, we immediately um, thought to ourselves, like said to ourselves, we can't stop, we can't, we can't not, we cannot lose contact with the sisters we have. So we move immediately, it was very sketchy at the beginning, but we move immediately into an online um, learning so we haven't actually stopped our online learning uh, from that point. So we still have running uh, online classes as if everything is okay. It's obviously very challenging for some sisters at the beginning, um, but it's also part of us trying to encourage them to embrace technology because you know, it had happened now that we can't go anywhere and we have to rely to this mic and to this computer you know, to talk to each other. So um, we, introduce online learning to them and we encourage them to communicate with us through WhatsApp, etc. So after what now we've been locked down about six months now that we have been in lockdown, some of them are actually proficient now in joining online classes and, um, and learning um, to type on WhatsApp, sending emojis, they now understand that they can watch video, um, if somebody sends video. So um, there's, a, there's a process of learning that actually um, it's almost like an accelerated learning for them mm. because of this uh, COVID situation. So I know there's a lot of uh, negative stories um, out there. I mean, not negative stories, but sad stories or, you know, some challenging time, with some people, but um, for sister works, um, of course, it's hard and it's tough, especially for the sisters. Um, and I suppose for, well, you know, a lot of other people too. Um, but I think the positive spin on that, on, on the situation we're in now, is that they become, you know, more and more um, friendly with uh, technology, something Ifrin, that they um, learn. Yeah, Ifrin, uh, what you said so resonated with me and um, it sort of gives me hope that out of adversity, you can create um, positive stories and really positive outcomes to, to real people. So I think your, your um, not-for-profit organization has grown out of nothing, uh, out of grassroots, out of real need 
to empower women who might be disadvantaged uh, through um, the fact that they were refugees or you know young mothers there's all kinds of uh, reasons why mm. um, uh, they're part of um, this initiative but I really love that you call them sisters so I, I don't have a sister uh, I don't know if you do but it's such a endearing um, mm. term um, and uh, very inclusive because uh, immediately you feel like you're part of something bigger definitely so can, can you tell us a bit more about the philosophy of, of the organization so you've touched on a few of, of those things already mm. What, what is driving you? So Ephraim gets up every morning and she's like, right, now today I'm going to be um, and empowering women or what happens uh, what, what happens every morning at your house after you've had your coffee? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now that's uh, absolutely right. We, um, we, Sister Works, um, very often the stories we heard from them is really um, the, the first families that they actually find when they arrive in this country and um, a lot of them come to this country not knowing everyone um, just like the usual migrant refugee stories come to the country very foreign um, and uh, they come to sister work so one way or another they get introduced um, to sister works and um, we refer to them as uh, sisters because we really know that the first thing you do to be able to um, integrate to the community is to feel accepted, mm -hmm. to feel that you are part of the community and we would like to be that community for them. So we welcome everyone. Like I did, I did mention earlier on that we do provide training programs um, um, to the sisters, but we are not just a training place. We are also a community. So there are some sisters that may not necessarily want to pursue that um, educational aspect of Sister Works, but they are very happy to be part of the community of Sister Works. So they're not driven, for example, to, oh, I need to have um, a certain income, I need to have a certain business, but they're just happy to have um, a family that they can go to. We have a communal lunch every lunchtime, you know, when we have face to face. So those kind of environment we'd like to provide with them because once they feel that they're accepted, once they feel they have the community, and then they start thinking about the next um, thing in life. Okay, I feel that I belong. What's next for me? And hopefully that becomes, you know, they become an entrepreneur, they pursue what they have been wanting to do, or even just a simple um, aspiration, like I'd like to make a little pocket money so I can take my kids to McDonald's or to a movie. And that's what that's what, what we are. And and like you said, waking up in the morning, you know, because you see them as a, as a family or part of your family. That that's the motivation in itself um, to just okay, I, I got to do it, and I got to do it because my sisters are waiting. My and and a lot of our staff and volunteers have that mentality with without a doubt. And if friend, it's a pretty diverse that really family, is isn't what it? Motivates um, them. Right, right. It's a pretty diverse family because you come from, what did you say, 87 different backgrounds and speak a lot of languages. Can you tell me a bit more about your, you know, your typical sister that um, and what would motivate her apart from education and wanting to um, be part of a social group? What mm. motivates these women? You know, you've, you've mentioned that a lot of them have this entrepreneurial spirit in them and they want to achieve above what, what they land with, essentially. But describe that family for us and how, how diverse is it really? Oh, it's, um, it's really, really um, diverse. Uh, we have the last count um, in our database is that we have 85 different nationalities. Um, uh, some of them obviously speak similar language or the same language, but it can sound like a, a, a complete broken records when, um, when they are there and they found another person that they in that they can speak the same language we obviously respect um you know that um interaction with the same when they find the same culture and the same friends which is exactly what we want them to mm. do right find a friend connection a connection yes exactly um but at the same time um we also encourage them to speak each other in english we, we give them a chance okay i have a right. chit chat for five minutes come on speak english now right 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 <laughs> because eventually you know they need to be able to um uh, relate with uh, a lot of different cultures um mm. you know speaking similar language especially now that we are in australia so we always encourage them to do that um in regards to the uh, the typical there is um you know obviously you can sort of group them into a different um typical or stereotypical of um, where they come from. Um, a lot of them um, 
we are dealing with usually the most vulnerable ones. So they're the one that um, had no education back in their own country, um, used to work with the land most of their lives or moving from one refugee camp to another refugee camp for their entire childhood. In fact, they actually get married and have children in a refugee camp. Mm -hmm. So those are, we work with, uh, with those type of uh, typicals. And then they are basically our biggest, in a way, um, families. And then, then we have another group that may come um, as a migrants with a better background um, in, you know, education, have prior Literally. work, et cetera. Yep. So usually with uh, uh, sisters like that, we give them opportunity in volunteering with us. So we have, for example, somebody that come with accounting background. Mm -hmm. If there is any um, opportunity volunteering with Sister Works, we offer that to them. Once we know that's what they have done in the past back uh, in their own country. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. mm. I think, I think so, sorry to interrupt you there, but I think this first few years are so crucial in, um, in, in creating that sense of belonging. And what I was reflecting on as I was listening to you is that there are uh, many organizations that I know of that are ba basically just tick off boxes, but your model is really hands-on and really inclusive um, to anybody, any women that, um, and, and, and as you said, that background might be diverse. You might have someone that's a highly educated professional and then someone that hasn't got any education at all. Um, so it's really interesting in how you connect them and merge, mm. um, you know, that family becomes something bigger than um, themselves, if you know what I mean, yeah? Yeah, yeah. So they, they usually start the same way with Sister Works, you know, with uh, introduced to each other, they join a certain classes and then they start feeling the classes and then they decide, okay, this is what I want or this is not what I want. So mm -hmm. the end results can be different to those different types of, um, you know, sisters with different backgrounds, but they start the same with Sister Works. First, they find a family. First, they find a community. They first feel comfortable. Um, and accept it and then then they move on some move faster than the other and some you know still trying to find their footings and mm. we don't we don't push we would like them to succeed but we do not intimidate them to then say you got to be successful in six right. months time you got to go out and things like that no we we sort of have a, a gentler approach it's not right. a university you know where you have pass or fail right. um, but um, but it's more about we understand there's a different capacity of learning from people there's some that never have a pencil in their hands before mm. you know you can't really force someone like that to be you know to, to, yeah yes that's right so you got to be gentle with them kind of thing mm. it is really kind of a personal um approach and personal tailored approach yes um but in the um our main focus um a lot because so we, we teach them uh, several different um, vocational skills, um, sewing, crafting, uh, cooking, because we also have some uh, cooking class. But in the recent time, the uh, sewing skills actually got really, really useful in this uh, COVID time. Another yeah, positive excited. story tell, here. Tell, tell us more <laughs> what happened, because I think you've, you've just uh, created this really successful little niche uh, demand, right? Yes, yes, yes. So um, when when the first lockdown happened, um, and because um, where we, at Sister Works we have a different culture that already used to wearing mask, so the first thing that we thought is, well, pandemic come, let's wear mask, and then that we start thinking, well, if I want to wear mask, maybe the other people wants to wear mask. So we start developing uh, around about March um, this face mask. Um, initially for the staff use, believe it or not, so for okay. our own use to protect ourselves, and then we start thinking, oh, well, if, if we need it, maybe other people will well need it. it. Yeah. yeah, so may as well make it, may as well so, uh, sell it. And we have at that time, we started off with eight sisters that we said, okay, here's a project for you. Um, here's a pattern, we train you, and then they already knew how to sew, obviously, at that time. So all they got to do is assemble one or two, and then we started selling. Unfortunately, it was so when when it happens, I remember it was in March and we were in the middle of the craziness of International Women's um, Month. There's immediately market cancels, speaking engagement cancels as soon as we got to the lockdown. So Sister Works lost um, quite a lot of opportunities in that month because International Women's Month um, uh, is really the second the busiest height. time of Sister Works other than mm -hmm. Christmas. Mm -hmm. Um, in regards to the social enterprise um, business. Um, so we thought, okay, 
let's let's do something then um, because we have to work from home and we can't go to uh, sister works so we move into an online selling so we start basically putting our effort in selling what we have uh, through online and this is when the uh, the reusable face mask um, of sister works you know started to uh, pick up we started with uh, eight sisters producing at the beginning and now we have 47 um, sisters wow. in our production team I remember the first month we were uh, the sisters made about 600 um, between eight of them and we managed to sell all of them and then we realized okay this could be an opportunity for more sisters to join the production team a lot of them are interested because at that time they are bored they are at home just right. like you know all of us all of so as soon as we said look you know how to sew already here's a project do you want to do it from home they jump into the bandwagon so and then from there on we have more and more sisters so as you can see the social enterprise side is busy in the mm -hmm. marketing and the logistic side of the um, reusable uh, mask and on the training side we are still training sisters in producing and making them we actually have some new learners that just come in as well okay. and we don't say no to them so we continue on our online class around sewing etc with the motivation that you know you can join our production team mm -hmm. as soon as you manage to uh, meet our qual uh, quality so yes so we have now 47 sisters working from home producing from home um, sister works took one step um, to help them by providing courier to drop off the raw materials and then um, picking up um, the finished product so we do uh, once a week drop off and pick up to the sisters home those 47 sisters up until today we now have uh, capacity um, to basically entertain any orders so not only retail but we can now with the 47 sisters we certainly can handle corporate orders uh, wholesale inquiries so if you have big orders wow. come to us <laughs> yeah yeah look I, I think the beauty of what you're describing you know like I, I really feel truly inspired uh, you know in this day and age where everything's bad news Mm. Um, the beauty of what you have there is that agility where you know very quickly uh you know the proverbial hit the fan and you were able to very quickly reshape everything and not just that but use it as an opportunity to expand and to empower more women mm. i think that's uh, that th those kinds of models that you have you know including the social enterprise arm of your of your business is really so pertinent and so um, useful to, to learn from because that that is what's going to work moving forward so I think you know now that you've built um, technology into it now that you've built um, you know the delivery into it, it it is that agility that we'll have to have all of us um, so mm. what I was hoping you, you can tell us is how you actually because it must have been a bit scary right like you you, you had plans for this is the case for everybody of course but like we we all had plans for 2020 and then everything went wrong. oh yeah <laughs> so how do you how do you manage that um you know having to be agile and having to be reinventing yourself every five minutes um i think you used the word scary before and i have to say it is scary um every decision we made you know we almost like okay we need to think about this carefully first is because we have limited resources i mean just like any other not-for-profit organization um, of course, we have the social enterprise arms where we aim to be self-sustainable, but SisterWorks at the moment still rely on some grants money. So we're at the moment mm -hmm. about 60% um, self-sustainable and we need um, an extra 40% supplemented income from grants or donation. Um, so yes, it is, um, it is, it is scary. Um, it is the decision that needed um, to be made, but it is um, the decision that need to happen or need to be made. And um, the main driver, so we always, the way we make a decision is we always just go back to our mission and purpose. What is it that we try to achieve? We have, we have at the moment, we have a hundred something sisters at, the, at home, mm. you know, um, by themselves or, you know, even with, with the families and in, in the building. We actually have a sister that in that lockup building, do you remember oh, the really? two weeks time? Yes, yeah, we actually have shocking. several sisters there. And she is actually part of our production team. I was digressing a, a little bit here because it was quite a nice and positive story I thought I want to share. Yeah. Is definitely. that she was she was in the production um, in the mask production team before the lockdown and the lockdown happened. 
and she couldn't go anywhere for two weeks. Uh, we, we keep contact with her and she said, I'm bored, I want to produce, but we can't drop any mass. We're not allowed to go and do anything. And then two weeks later, the first thing she did after the lockdown finished is call us and says, look, you can come now. I'm looking forward to BBC again. And then she actually made a video of herself and she said, I'm feeling better now. I am now BC. I wake up in the morning knowing that I have I have a purpose. I want to make mm. something, you know, it's like so um, that that two weeks time really made her realize that, you know, having having something to do, having an objective of that day to produce mm. something or to do something is really important. So definitely we support her straight away as soon as she wants to go back to production. So these are the type of, um, you know, sort of like mental well-being. It's not only about right. making money for her. It's about her mental well-being of doing something and be useful. Um, so that that's the nice story I would love um, to share on, on that front. Um, going back to the decision, yes, we always make a decision based on our mission purpose. If this decision, extra spending money is going to basically fulfill that mission and our purpose, we do it. So I think um, to answer your question, it is scary, but as long as we know it is for our purpose, it's a decision worth making. Yeah, because I think I think um, when we are in crisis, we do use a lot a lot of our gut instinct to to uh, to do certain things. And I think in business, which is essentially what you're in, and mm. you know, there's like a, a essentially a I don't want to call it a production line, but there are people dependent on 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 you, right? So I think that's an extra level of responsibility, yes. or, or um, you know, I'm sure that you have it in the back of your minds to 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 be sure that these women are supported and not just uh, you know you don't just disappear. Um, but I, I really love the model of changing um, one woman's life at a time, I guess is what you're describing. So mm, it's mm, that sisterhood, mm. it's that um, connection where they can rely on someone to, to give them something positive to do so that they feel like they're part of the society. And, and they really are. It's not just a feeling, it's, it's contributing. But I, I've seen your masks online because, you know, of course, I stalk you on Facebook and all kinds of <laughs> places. And they're really pretty. I think I, I think I really like So a lot of your women are really talented, I think. No, a am I right? Yes, yes, definitely. Um, they are. Um, they definitely have that. I think when you... Um, when you are not used to work with, you know, a lot of numbers and analyticals, you know, you can't help yourself to become crafty. Mm. And, uh, and they, they also enjoy doing it. That's the most, that's the most thing. We have one sisters that always like to post uh, when the delivery arrives, take a picture on the, on the patterns. And for us, it's like a sneak peek. It's like a marketing material for right. us. This is the sneak peek for the next batch of masks that will be released to the market because see, you know, she took the picture. So that's, um, that she 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 understands that um, you know this uh this type of thing is important and, and she likes taking pictures too so <laughs> that right, helps right <laughs> right, right. So speaking of marketing we're gonna let you tell us what your website is and how to get in contact with you to order hundreds of thousands of masks yes um, so that you can employ <laughs> hundreds of thousands of, of women um, but what I wanted to do right now is hand over hand over to Andrea for some questions because we've got a few. Thank you, ladies. Uh, I wanted to ask you, Efren, what sort of training do you provide to migrant women? Um, we have what we call a vocational um, training. So um, they are ranging from uh, cooking training. So we have a, like a, an eight weeks uh, program cooking training where at the end of it, they get to sit on an exam and get the food handling certificates. We have um, sewing classes uh, ranging from um, beginner intermediate and advanced. We have a general craft class, but we also have um, some well-being class. Um, we have a conversational English class. We have a yoga class just recently because oh, wow. we thought- Online? Yes, online. Yes, It'll be right fun right. to do it online. So we had a yoga class. We have an art therapy class. Um, so um, and our class, um, the main offering typically stays the same, but the other extra bits and pieces um, is usually sort of revolving, um, depending on um, sometimes there's a very talented um, um, person that are offering, um, you know, pro bono services, and we won't say no to that. So let's just, okay, let's do yoga. So, um, so we do a yoga class too. So you're pretty agile and pretty flexible with, and, and, and I think that's a key to success too, so that you're not too rigid and you sort of respond mm. to what, what women need essentially. Definitely. Um, you know, as you go along. 
our art therapy class is actually the the most popular one in this in this lockdown time. Mm, okay. Mm. Interesting. Because that's right. one way that people can express their creativity as well. And it, it's a really good mental health um, yeah. activity. Yeah. All right, Andrea, what else do we have? Thank you. Thank you, Efren. Uh, how can I get in contact with Sister Work? Uh, do you have a website or oh, yes. um, social media network? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, yes, we have uh, definitely have a website. And that's the website is also where our online shops is located. So, Sister Works dot org dot au we have um, all um, social media channels also covered we have our facebook um, sister works so if you just google sister works we also have uh, we are also in linkedin we are in uh, twitter we are in uh, instagram um, so i think if you google sister works you will hit one of those and phone numbers um, if you google the website you also have the phone numbers um, there um, there are several emails as well that you can reach um, us, especially if you would like to uh, order um, our reusable face mask um, at the moment. Um, we have a different kind of uh, face mask too. Do we have a, a sort of like a nice fashion design one uh, made of uh, cotton, so it's nice and light for summer. We also have a DHHS compliant mask, which is um, with the um, waterproof outer layer. So they're, they're useful for, you know, working outside, you know, construction workings and all that sort of gardening working, etc. cetera. So uh, we have uh, we have few selections. Amazing, because you're normally based in uh, Richmond and you have a shop in Richmond, am I, am I right? Yes. Yeah. So but we that's are not on, close, um, of course, yeah. Yeah, so uh, now, unfortunately, we couldn't open. The online shop is still there. Uh, we are located in uh, 296 uh, Bridge Road. We are right opposite the uh, Yarra City uh, Town Hall. Okay. Uh, so the website, uh, for those that are uh, taking notes, is, is again, sisterworks.org.au. And, um, you know, they're everywhere, basically, all the social media channels. Uh, so if you Google them, you'll find them. Um, all right, Andrew, any other questions? Otherwise, I'll have a couple still. Yes, I do have a question. Oh, are there any requirements if friend to be part of Sister Works or can anyone join? Oh, we, we welcome we welcome everyone and anyone. There is no there is no prerequisite uh, marks or anything like that to join Sister Works. Any sisters can basically come and join. They just have to um, they just have to either come. Well, they used to just come or walk in. Um, but now that they can't, um, they probably will have to call first. So, all right. Thank you so much. There's no more questions from my side. Okay. So I have a couple. So firstly, uh, I did want to say thank you, uh, Ifrin, for joining us this morning and giving us the positive story that we were all waiting for. Um, it's really inspiring. Um, but in, in terms of questions, I, I just have a couple of uh, at my end, um, and that is, um, uh, what are your plans for the future? Like, do, do you obviously, you know, as your organization is growing, uh, where are you heading with this? Like, are you going to expand? Are you going to open more branches? Are you going to go online? Like, what's your, um, you know, in this day and age, which is very unpredictable, but where are you going? That's a very good question. I'm looking forward for that question. Um, so. This uh, COVID actually taught us um, something that online classes is actually important. And we actually have more participation in online classes because there is no challenge in getting public transport to sister works. There's no mm -hmm. challenge of dropping the kids to the um, childcare, et cetera. So our mission is to basically um, bigger our outreach. And we think that from this six months experience, we knew that online is going to stay with Sisterworks. So we're going to offer face-to-face -face as well as online. So when we run a class, we can do a face-to-face -face, um, meeting as well as running an online mm -hmm. class. So we're going to actually move to that model. We already made that decision that Sisterworks is going to offer online uh, classes and face-to-face -face classes. And as, as part of um, that as well is that to um, have more reach. We know that having a physical center is very resource intensive. You need to pay rent, you need to pay all the outgoings. So SisterWorks um, actually plan even before the, this COVID, which actually stopped because of COVID, is to do what we call a mobile um, empowerment hub or mobile hub. Mm -hmm. um, basically the concept around there is that 
we have a teacher and maybe one or two volunteers that then pack up uh, sewing machines and other equipments that we have and go to another organizations that can uh, be that can actually be benefited from our program. So we run our program at their center. Um, before COVID, we already have uh, three interested party. In fact, we actually meant to run our first uh, class um, in August, but obviously that didn't happen. Yeah. So we're going to activate that plan as soon as we are allowed to do so. Um, so that's going to be um, the way we're going to um, broaden our reach with online and also doing this mobile hub. With mobile hub, there is no limitation at the moment in terms of distance. Um, we're even thinking of maybe going to Geelong if it's possible, because we know that there are actually quite a lot of um, settlement um, area in Geelong. Geelong is always in, in our radar. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's how we plan to move um, to the, you know, to the future in regards to how Sister Works would like to uh, to help or reach more women, more sisters. Right. So, Ifrin, I, I think you've um, you've truly inspired us, us this morning. I think we've truly been able to show a positive um, story out of uh, adversity and out of uh, a, a, an issue or a challenge, how you can turn things around and make a real difference to real people uh, for whom that's sometimes probably the only link they have with their, their other sisters or their sisterhood. So I think you're doing an amazing job. We're going to watch this space. Um, and when we catch up in six months or 12 months time, you, you're probably going to grow exponentially. So we wish you all the best truly um, with um, all your work, all your plans. And I know that you're also making a difference to the community by producing masks at the moment. If anyone needs masks, this is the place you've got to go, sisterworks.org.au. <laughs> uh, and uh, you've been amazing. So thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It's really thank great. You. Wonderful. Thank you so much.